All right, guys. Okay, so in today's video, we're continuing our brand new series called Copycats, okay, where we are copying heroes in the Bible. Okay, heroes of faith, heroes of obedience, heroes in the Bible. Okay, this is all about copying them, copying their faith, copying their patience, copying their obedience to God. Okay, so before I reveal who we're going to be a copycat of today, okay, I thought I'd give you guys a little hint first of all. Okay, I think we should play a little guessing game first. What do you think? Yeah, 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 okay. So, Think about this, right? You'll probably be able to guess who this is, okay? Because you guys read your Bibles, you guys know your stuff, right? Okay, so King Saul is going into battle with the Philistines, right? Okay, he's got his army, okay? But there's just one big, big, huge problem, okay? There is this huge giant that everyone is scared of, okay? This huge giant from the Philistines that everyone is absolutely terrified of, okay? So... King Saul and his men, they're like, wait, what are we going to do? We, we, we need someone who can take on this huge, massive giant. We don't, I mean, what, what are we going to do? Right? Anyway, this young, particular young boy comes you know, comes into the picture, right? And he's like, I'm going to do it. And they're like, no, 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 no. You need to go back and look after the sheep. Okay, you're a shepherd. You're not a warrior. You're not a soldier. This huge, massive giant is going to squish you like a mashed potato. Okay, you can't do that. And he's like, no, yes, I can. I'm going to trust God. God is on my side, right? Okay? So they tried different things on this particular young boy. They put an arm on him. It's too big. And they're like, oh, what's it? They was like, do you know what, guys? Forget all that. Forget all that. I don't need all that. Okay? All I need is not one, not two, not three, not four, but five smooth stones. Okay? So this young boy was like, all I need are five smooth stones and a sling and let me at him. Okay? Can we guess who it is? Oh, I'm going to keep you guessing. It's praise time. This song's for get up. Everybody get up on your feet. Come on. Are you ready to praise? Are you ready to praise? Let's go. Let's go! 
today basically okay who are serious today on copycat it's going to be about have you guessed it it's yes it's david king david okay mighty bold a man after god's own heart that's who we're going to be talking about today okay but before we get into that hello guys and welcome to today's video it's been a while since i've seen you guys so it's great to be seeing you uh, virtually or through this camera okay for you guys to be seeing me once again i'm so excited i hope you guys have had a blessed week okay the sun's been shining i mean there was a little bit of rain here and there but the sun has been shining the sun is shining today actually i checked outside before <laughs> and it's a beautiful 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 day and i hope it's beautiful where you guys are too so i'm excited yes Joyce introduced you guys to the series on copycats last week where we talked about Abraham and his faith and his obedience to God. And today we're going to be talking about King David and everything we can learn. Well, not everything, we can't cover everything because in these videos we have a short amount of time. But we're going to be talking about some, some key things about David that we can take away, that we can apply to our own lives, okay? In our series called, that's right, copycats, yes. Copycat. You guys know what a copycat is. Okay, a copycat is something that copies everything that you're doing, okay? But today I'm going to be talking about what we need to copy from David because David wasn't perfect. Abraham wasn't perfect. No one is perfect apart from Jesus, okay? Jesus is and was the only one that is, that's basically perfect, okay? But today there's still good things that we can pick up from Abraham, we can pick up from David, we can pick up from key people in the Bible. So I think we should get right to it. Are you ready? Let's go! Yes, awesome stuff. I'm so excited to be talking to you guys about David today, or King David, should I say. Now, there's so much to the story of David, okay? Because David went through such a journey. I mean, we read about him literally in multiple places in the Bible, okay? First Samuel, you know, Psalms, you know. So we read about David a lot in the Bible, even in Acts as well, which I'm going to talk about a bit later. We, we, we read so much about David, okay? Because like the Bible says, David was a man after God's own heart. David loved God. David wanted to do God's will, but he wasn't perfect, okay? But what I think will be really cool is to talk about, I guess, when we're introduced to David in the Bible, okay? So get your Bibles. Okay, Bible's at the ready, okay? And I hope you guys like that. I've got my I've got my smooth stones here, okay? All five of them in and my sling. Right ow. <laughs> and my sling in 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 yeah, in just like yeah, to honor David, to honor King David, the mightiness he did, okay? The how mighty he was, how bold and how brave he was to take on a giant, okay? So 
Let's talk about then our key verse, first of all, okay? So this is our memory verse. Joyce told you about our memory verse last week. It's our memory verse today. And it's going to be our memory verse for a couple of weeks, okay? Because I think it's so important for us to learn from this Bible verse, okay? And Jesus will want us to learn from this because this is what Jesus did himself. Jesus walked by faith and Jesus walked by patience, okay? He was an example of faith and patience every single day, okay? So he wants us to be and to learn from people in the the Bible like Abraham and like David, okay? So let's open our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 6, verses 12, okay? So that's Hebrews chapter 6, verses 12. And do you know what? I think at this point, you guys don't need to open it up, okay? You guys should, you know, can, can kind of just read it by heart, right? <laughs> no, I'm just going, I'm, I'm joking. Open it up, and when you're there, say hallelujah, amen. So Hebrews 6, 12 says that you do not become sluggish, okay? Another word for sluggish is lazy yes but imitate another word for imitate means copy those who through faith and patience inherit the promises okay so the bible says that you do not become sluggish or you do not become lazy but imitate or copy those who through faith and patience inherit the promises okay so how do we inherit the promises what is that all about well that basically the promises are what god has said Promises are the blessings and all the amazing things that God has for us, okay? So we're only able to inherit those, receive those, and see them come to pass in our lives by what? By faith and patience, okay? So our focus needs to be on who? On Jesus all the time, okay? And that's how we inherit the promises. It's through faith in Jesus and patience, just waiting on him and trusting him and believing in him and him alone, okay? So let's talk about David then, right? Let's talk a little bit about David. So when we first meet David in the Bible, okay? And I'm going to put the, the you know, these particular Bible verses in the Let's Grow Further screen towards the end, okay? So you guys can spend some time reading this week by yourself, with your families, okay? So when we're first introduced to David, he lives in, you know, lived in Bethlehem, okay? He had seven brothers and his dad was called Jesse. That's what we need to remember, okay? So he had seven brothers and his dad was, you know, was called Jesse. And David's job basically was to look after the sheep, is to look after his father's flock. So David would tend to his, you know, to the sheep and David David was faithful which means David did what he said he would do so he was given the job of, of, of a shepherd boy he did it he was faithful to it okay he didn't let anyone distract him from it you know he didn't let he didn't even let a lion stand in his way okay why because one day as David is tending to the sheep right a lion comes and tries to attack one of the sheep, basically tries to eat one of the sheep, okay? And what does David do? Do you guys remember? Does David run away and go, oh, okay, yeah, I'm scared. Ah! No, guess what David does? David attacks that lion back, okay? I mean, how bold and how brave is that? How courageous is that, okay? That is so courageous, right? David attacked that lion, okay? And guess what David did? David snatched the lamb, right, from the lion, okay? So David saved the lamb, okay? And David killed that lion with his bare hands. Why? Because the lion was bad. The lion was trying to eat his father's flock. He wasn't going to let that happen, okay? Think of Jesus. Jesus protects us in that same way, right? When the devil tries to, tries to attack us or when the devil tries to hurt us, Jesus is right there to snatch us out of the, you know, devil's hand. And that's how, how did Jesus do that? By dying on the cross for us. Okay, by dying on the cross for us. So David attacked that lion, killed that lion with his bare hands and saved the lamb, okay? So I think at this time, God was like, okay, this, 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 this kid is serious. This kid has the potential to become a king. So let's read about, okay, in 1 Samuel, again, I'll put this at the end, how, okay, David was chosen to be king. So let's read a quick story of how God used Samuel, the prophet, okay? So... Samuel, God's prophet, was still sad that King Saul had failed God so badly, okay? So King Saul was the king at the time, and King Saul wasn't a very good king. He just did his own thing. He was full of pride. He didn't obey God. He didn't honor God. Whereas David, on the other hand, was a little boy that honored God, that loved God, that trusted God with everything, right? Okay, so how long will you mourn for Saul? God scolded Samuel. So God told Samuel off. How long are you going to mourn for Saul, right? And God was like, I am sending you to Jesse. And who's Jesse? 
David's dad, exactly. For I have provided myself a king among his sons. Jesse was David's father, as I said before. So even though Samuel knew King Saul might kill him for going to find another king, the prophet obeyed God. Okay, so Samuel had to obey God. Okay, he knew that, okay, King Saul's going to be like, wait a second, you're, you're the prophet and you're, you're, you're trying to find another king in my place. So Samuel knew what King Saul was like, okay? So when Samuel arrived, Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. So Jesse, David's dad, brought his seven sons. David wasn't a part of them. David was out turning to the sheep. You know, Jesse brought his sons before Samuel and said, look, here are my sons. Surely, surely one of them is the king. Surely it has to be one of them, okay? Right, let's read on. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these, right? So Samuel was like, oh yeah, God, it must be one of these. Yeah, it must be one of these seven. They look handsome. They look, yeah. They, you. So Samuel was looking at the outward appearance and saying, they look handsome. Yeah, this one's tall. <gasps> this one's got muscles. You know, Samuel was doing it that way, okay? So that only left David, the youngest. He was out with the sheep, as I said before, okay? Because guess what? God told Samuel, it's none of those seven boys. It's none of them, okay? So... Jesse was like, okay, I've got one more son. Okay, I've got one more son. He's out turning to the sheep. So while Samuel was there, right, and the sons were, you know, the seven, the seven boys were out there trying to show themselves off. David was busy being faithful, looking after his father's flock, okay, right? And the Lord said, arise. Okay, so once David stood before Samuel, God said to Samuel, arise, anoint him, for this is the one, okay? For this is the one. That is how David became King David. That is how God chose him to be king, okay? Now, what's one key thing that we can learn from that story? Well, for me, when I think about everything I've said you know, so far, and I even think about David fighting Goliath, I think, number one, be courageous, okay? Be courageous, because just like David, David didn't believe and rely on his own strength, especially when he was facing Goliath. Especially when he was facing that lion, when he was saving that lamb from the lion. He trusted in God. He believed in the strength of God. He believed that God would help him in difficult situations. So he was able to be courageous, okay? So we, we can be courageous because we trust in God, okay? Because we believe that God is our strength, okay? And David even talks about that, you know, in Psalms. It says that the Lord is my strength and my shield, Okay, so David is able to be courageous because he trusted God. And number two, be faithful. Okay, and I've spoken to you guys about what faithfulness means. Okay, so it's one of the fruits of the spirit. Okay, so faithfulness means basically keeping your word, honoring your word. If you say you're going to do something, do it. Because like God has given us all these promises in here. Okay, he does it right? God fulfills it, okay? All we have to do is just believe, right? So God wants us to be faithful, okay? So number one, be courageous. Number two, be faithful, which means keep your word, okay? Do what you've agreed, okay? Even if it's, you know, your mom, your mom or dad has said, go and clean your room, and you said, okay, I'm going to do it, and you don't do it. That's not faithfulness, okay? Faithfulness is when you actually say, okay, mom, okay, dad, I'm going to do it, and faithfulness is you actually doing it, Okay, faithfulness is you saying, okay, I'm going to wake up at seven o'clock every morning to pray and read my Bible. Faithfulness is actually waking up at seven o'clock in the morning, praying and reading your Bible. Okay, so be courageous, be faithful. Number three, be a boy or girl after God's own heart. Okay, because the Bible says in Acts chapter 12, let's, let's go there actually, let's open our Bibles to Acts chapter 12 verses 20 okay i'm actually going to read to 22 okay so acts chapter 12 verses 20 to 22 when you're there say hallelujah okay so it says after that god gave them judges to rule until the time of samuel the prophet then the people begged for a king okay so the jews were desperate for a king that you know they needed a good king right and god gave them saul son of kish a man of the tribe of benjamin who reigned for 40 years but God removed Saul and replaced him with David, a man about whom God said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. So this is what God said. He said, David is a man after my own heart. And the Bible continues. It says, he will do everything I want him to do. Okay? So David was interested in what pleased God. 
David wanted to please God. He wanted to obey God. He wanted to honor God. That is being a man after God's own heart. Okay, and the Bible says he will do everything I want him to do. Okay, so number one, be courageous. Number two, be faithful. Number three, be a boy or girl after God's own heart. Right, I'm taking my stones and my sling and I'm going to go kill some giants. Woo! So what is our memory verse again for the series of copycats? What is it? Yes, Hebrews chapter, chapter 6, yes, verses, verses 12, yes. And what does it say? Come on, come on, come on. Okay, it says that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises, okay? So what we can learn from, from David today, or King David, should I say, I like calling him King David, actually. Yes, what we can learn from King David, right, this week is to be faithful, to be courageous, and to be a boy or girl after God's own heart. And I think if we can keep those three things in mind and apply them to our lives, we're gonna go really far in life, okay? And God's gonna use us mightily in Jesus' name, okay? So God bless you, God keep you, God favor you, and always remember that God has made you the very best. Ooh, ooh, ooh.